Nowadays, very few tactical shooters would even attempt to incorporate a proper team-based single-player experience. And out of those that do, even fewer let us command our AI teammates satisfactorily. So today I want to highlight several mechanics from earlier titles in the genre, and with a few suggestions of my own, try to outline some kind of a framework for any upcoming or even any future games to consider. Using too many keybinds for various different functions can oftentimes overwhelm newer players and make a game feel clunky, even to returning players. In most games, the interact key is already context sensitive. So I think it was a smart design decision when Rainbow Six Raven Shield made its interact key double as its command button. When you are within interactable distance of an object or a person, an action icon will appear on your HUD, indicating that pressing the interact key will make you perform the action yourself. But when you have a team with you in single player, sometimes a more transparent action icon is displayed instead. When this occurs, pressing the interact key will instead issue an order for your team to carry out the action. Because ordering your team is now almost exactly like performing the action yourself, this makes it not only more intuitive, but also simpler since there is one less extra keybind to worry about. Something else in Raven Shield that made a lot of sense was that if you wanted to order your team to fall in, just look at the ground near your feet and press the command button. Your team will then immediately regroup on you and then follow you until you specify otherwise. To order your team to move to a location, simply point to it and press the command button. Once they arrive, they should automatically hold the position until you command otherwise. For instance, by ordering them to fall in, to move elsewhere, or to perform any other different action. In order to fully utilize your fire team, sometimes you need to be able to split them into a couple of smaller sub-elements. To accomplish this efficiently, you also need the ability to specifically select each sub-element directly, that is, without having to toggle between them. This could be achieved without requiring the game to display any additional hard element. For instance, by simply pressing F1 to select the whole element, pressing F2 to select one sub-element, and pressing F3 to select another sub-element. Naturally, for a 4-man fire team, your first sub-element will consist of you and the number 2 man, while the remaining pair make up your second sub-element. This system was used well in games such as the SOCOM series on the PS2, as well as Fireteam Bravo 3 on the PSP. Other games put you in command of 4 subordinates, dividable into 2 teams of 2. Games like SWAT 3, SWAT 4, SOCOM 4, and the 3 main installments of Brothers in Arms. In any case, the Heartless team selection system suggested here will function just the same. You will also be able to change the rules of engagement of your team in a comparable manner, should you ever need to do so. To issue a hold fire order to your entire element, briefly hold F1. If you wanted either only your first or only your second sub-element to hold fire, then briefly hold F2 or F3 respectively. Likewise, when you need your team members to engage enemies on site again, simply double tap F1, F2, or F3 to order the respective grouping to fire at will. This way, you'll be able to change a sub-element's ROE directly without even needing to quote unquote select them first before being able to do it. And all this could be done with absolutely no HUD. Speaking of the HUD, generally, the less interface elements clutter the screen, the more immersive the potential experience could be. However, without a voice command system in place, which we will get to in a minute, I'm afraid a couple of exceptions just have to be made. The quick order indicator shows the default command that you will give if you press the command button. A default command should be both contextual and situational. For example, on a shut door, the default command should be to stack up, but if your team is already stacked up on it, then it should now become open and clear. Further options should be made available via a command menu. The command menu offers additional options and it can be brought up by holding down the command button. Move the mouse to highlight your desired order and left click to immediately issue the order. To exit the command menu without issuing an order, release the command button without clicking on an order. This is useful when you need to give more precise orders, not only in more open settings and outdoor environments, for example, when you need your team to deploy smoke grenades to an area, but also in urban and close quarter environments, particularly when it comes to room clearing. Speaking of room clearing, 
Another thing I miss from Raven Shield is the Zulu Go Code, which enabled us to coordinate activities like conducting a dual entry between multiple AI controlled teams dynamically during a mission on the fly. This is done by issuing orders that wait for the Zulu Go Code before the teams execute them. To issue an order on Zulu, access the command menu normally, but instead of left clicking the desired order, you right click it. The currently selected team will now stand by for the Zulu Go code before executing the order. To coordinate that order with another team, select the other team and issue another order on Zulu. The Zulu Go code is given by pressing a separate key. A voice recognition system to command your fire team in single player games is nothing new. Earlier titles that supported this feature on the PS2 include the SOCOM series and Ghost Recon Jungle Storm. Despite technological advances for the past couple of decades though, it's unfortunate that modern tactical shooters still find it challenging to integrate this into their base game, but hopefully we'll be able to experience it once again soon. Who knows?